Hey gearheads, thanks for tuning in. This is part two of the traffic light. Dan's really upping his decorating game. Want to see how he finished it? Hey Dan, run that intro. Hey gearheads, thanks for tuning in and welcome back to Dan's Garage. Now this is part two of the restoration of the traffic light. If you did not see part one, click on this link right up here. You can watch part one, and when you're done with that, come back and watch this one. It'll probably be at the end of that one, but you're not really gonna understand what's going on unless you watch part one first. So click on that, watch part one. If you've already seen part one, let's take a look at what we're in for. So to recap, we got our light open. We figured out where all the wires are going. There's two wires to each light, and then we have a distribution block. And we got this AC traffic light controller, which is basically just a circuit board that's going to make the lights go through the right sequence. And this is the bulb that came out of it. I'm not really sure what wattage this is, but it's a regular B base, so I just went out and bought three of these 60 watt bulbs. We'll see how they look. If we need more powerful ones, we can always just unscrew these and put in other ones. That's the beauty of it being an incandescent setup. Now, as we discussed in part one, you can change these over to LED. That's what most DOTs are doing, but for our purposes here in the garage, as it being just a decoration, it's easier to just have regular light bulbs. These are basically a modular setup. Each one of these squares is exactly the same, and they all have these provisions for the circuit uh, board, or the connecting points. And you can see the two screw holes there, and the two blocks to hold up the uh, distribution block. And that's where we have this one. So we're going to take this all off. And you can see they actually coded the colors of the wires to the light. So you have your red light, your yellow light in the middle, and then the green one that goes over there. And it actually says it on the inside there too. So you can see it says red, amber, and green. See? Red, amber, and green. So the first thing I'm going to do is get all these wires disconnected from here. And we'll go ahead and pull this out and see if we can get this circuit board in. Like I said, these are color-coded, so we can pull these off, and we'll know which wire goes where. So the commons are white, so they're all together in the same place. Makes it nice and easy. We can also clean these off, which will help us when we put it back together. We're actually going to have to take these ends off and cut the wires back to put in the circuit board. Now with that out of the way and all the wires gone, we can clean out the inside of this, make it a little bit easier to work on. So we can go from this to this. It doesn't really look much better, does it? So let's get this back out of here. And this is, I think, going to be the first thing we do is figuring out how to mount this circuit board. I don't know if we'll be able to use these. These look like it's a double stick tape and then it maybe mounts on there. Or maybe we can use those screws and put it back in the middle. I don't know. But anyway, this is what it looks like. So let's see how it's going to fit in there. I guess it makes the most sense to keep it here in the middle. So, I mean, it is a bare back circuit board. I wish they had this a little bit more protected. But once it's settled, it's not really going to go anywhere. So maybe instead of putting it over there, we put it over here and maybe... We can use these double stick tape mounts and mount it like this on the back here. So I think that's probably a good idea. Uh, the wires will be coming from here and then each light will go here. So the one can go that way, one will go this way, and one will go that way. I'm pretty sure we have clearance for that because the other block was right there. So let me clean the back of this really well and see if we can get these to stick and we'll get this mounted. Maybe I should mount it this way because that'll give us more room to have wires kind of around. So that's going to be the way we mount it. And then these are the uh, controllers to decide what the uh, delay is on the yellow amber light. And this is the one to program which sequence we have. But keep in mind, we can always just pull this open once it's all set up and hanging on the uh, 
on the wall, we can pull this open and pull the bucket out and we can change it if we need to. So, I mean, it has to mount somewhere. So I think we're going to clean it off and get it here. Now, another thing I noticed in here is it says it was made in Syracuse, New York. And I was born in New York, up in Mount Kisco, upstate, and I lived in uh, Long Island in East Northport. If you didn't know that, go back to the very, very, very first episode of Dan's Garage ever where I introduce who I am, where I'm from, and what got me to the position of where I am now when I started a YouTube channel. So if you don't really know who I am or you're seeing this as the first video, and like, who is this guy? Where did he come from? Go check out my first video. Maybe I'll put a link up there. So I got these four uh, little stanchions in here. And uh, we just got to peel this tape off, each one of these, and hopefully I have it cleaned up well enough that it'll stick in there, and it will stay in there. And we're just going to mount it right up in here. And we'll press, and hopefully it'll stay there forever and ever and ever. So for power, I'm just going to use this standard extension cord. I'm going to pull this end off, which I've already had to replace anyway. And for right now, we'll just power it up and get it working and everything. Once it's up and running and mounted where it needs to be, I can always trim this back. Remember, I can open these up and I can get in there access-wise. So I can cut this down and maybe get an extra extension cord out of here, maybe a short one for Christmas lights next year. So we'll get this off and get it wired up. So I got the wire holder off on this side, and this just has three screws here, and it kind of pops out. Now, if you don't know anything about electrical wiring, don't mess with this stuff, but if you're like me, you're going to mess with that anyway. Just make sure the other end is not plugged in. Now, since this is an older system, unfortunately it doesn't have a ground, but it's up in the air anyway, so no one should be touching it, but we don't need that. And then we're just going to see if I can feed it through here. I might need to grab a sticker or something to get it on through. There we go. And then this power wire is going to go through the hole here. And it's going to get fed right into these down here. Now you definitely want to make sure that we have good wires here. This is nice and stripped well. I might just cut it down a little bit and we'll get that wired into there. All right, now we got the line and the neutral in there. Of course, it's not plugged in. And now what we'll do is we'll uh, trim off the wires from those uh, fixtures and we'll put them in here where they need to be. So I was looking at the circuit board here and I really don't see which line is hot and which line is neutral for the lights. And as we know on this side, it just says green, yellow, and red. So I decided to look at the directions. I know, I know, guys don't look at directions, but I really don't want to blow this thing up. So it does say that I should connect the AC and neutral power wires as shown below, which is here, which is what we did. And it says I should plug it in and make sure all these lights light up. So we know we have the AC and power light, um, the AC and neutral in, so I think we should plug it in and see if these three light up, and hopefully they do. And here's a duration time adjust. Oh, so this is the adjuster for the amber light. We'll, we'll get to that later. And this does show that there's two different ways we can hook this up. We can do the, um, the white neutrals on the top of each one, or we can just put all the white neutrals together and just do the one wire on the bottom. So I don't know what I'll do. Gonna plug it in, so wish me luck. I'm going to stand way over here and plug it in so I don't have to worry about nothing. Ready? Hey, look at that. It even shows us what the sequence is. Green, yellow, red. Green, yellow, red. All right. Well, that's good. That at least means that our power works and the circuit board works. So. I guess what we can do at this point is go ahead and set the sequence for what we want and adjust the timing for the amber light before we go any further. So I got the sequence set. I slowed down the lights and the yellow is actually a little faster now. So it's going to be kind of red for like 13 seconds and then it'll go to green for 13 seconds and it goes to yellow for like three seconds and then to red. So I think that's more like a traffic light here in the United States would be. Uh, again, I can always adjust that later on, but let's get this thing together and make sure everything works and then we can see what it looks like once it's up. And in order to do that, we have to trim off these connectors 
and uh, strip the wires back a little bit. Alright, so I got all the wires stripped and in the way they need to be. Actually, it looks pretty neat in there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll reinstall the buckets and clean them up. I think I found an easier way to put these in. When I took them out, um, I really didn't understand how it works. So I think what we do is we go ahead and put this spring on the pin, press that in and get it locked onto this one. And then this just rotates into place. Seems pretty easy. All right. Okay, as you can see, we have a problem. This one is not fitting in because the circuit board and where I put it. So I'm gonna have to, I think I can move it over a little bit and this will have clearance to uh, sit in there. Or I'm going to have to put it maybe on the side I don't know. Let's find out. All right, so we got it fitting in there now. Uh, everything's in the way it needs to be. The circuit board is kind of behind it over there instead of back here. Um, I do want to clean these up a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and put the bulbs in, clean these up, and we'll see if it works. Bam. 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 All right, so all three bulbs are in, so I'm gonna go over there and plug it in, and if it works correctly, this one should go on for like 13 seconds, and then this one will go on for 13 seconds, and then this will go on for like three seconds, and it'll go back to this, and then we'll get to the fronts, and we'll get them uh, to have some color. Cool, well the red works. Now it should go to the green after, what did I say, 13 seconds? I didn't start counting, did you? There you go, green. So that looks good. And then again, that is the same timing as this. It's about 13, 13 seconds, I think. And then the yellow, because the yellow is shorter, I think the yellow is only like three seconds. So we'll see when that goes on. One, two, three. There you go, to red. So let's go ahead and get these uh, lenses closed and see what it looks like. Now, if you remember, these are just on with these little rotatable wing nut operations. So we just close that and tighten these wing nuts. And that's pretty much all you need. This actually seals it as well. Then we can clean the outsides. So let's get the green is done. We'll get the yellow in here. This makes it really easy to change bulbs later on too, or to adjust settings if we need to. And uh, we may do that, we may not. We'll see. And then we'll close this red. And then I'm going to go ahead and we'll stand it up and we'll plug it in and we'll see what it looks like. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll stand it up and hopefully it'll stay balanced there. All right, I'm going to plug it in. We'll see how it looks with the lenses closed. There's the red. I'm actually pretty happy with that wattage. I think that wattage looks nice. It's gonna look even cooler when I have the lights off in the garage. Let's see what that green looks like. Look at that. I thought the green looked a little blue. I mean, it's it's like a light green, but I guess it's fine. I mean, it's an official traffic light, so who knows? Yellow? Yellow is probably gonna be bright because in most places when you see yellow, you wanna slow down to stop. I'm from New York, so when we see yellow, we speed up. Then it goes to red. So now we got it working. So the goal always was to put it up in that corner. It's above the compressor. It's kind of an empty space anyway, so I think it'll fill it up nice. It'll keep it out of the way and look really cool. So in order to do that, I got to clean up some stuff and uh, get a hanger so we can put it up there. So I got this cleaned off. We're going to be hanging it up there with this. All right, now to hang it up.
Okay, so I hung it up and it looks awesome back there. There's only one problem. You can't see the green light. So when the green is on, you can't see it because it's behind the compressor. And then when the yellow comes on, of course you can see the yellow and then it changes and becomes red and then you can see the red. So I think what I'm gonna do is just move it forward to that second rafter there. That way it'll be in front of the compressor. We'll be able to see all three lights. Kinda is gonna help me from putting a lot of junk on top of this uh, cabinet anyway. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. Now you can see the green, you can see the yellow, and you can see the red. So it kinda looks a little awkward cause it's a new decoration in the garage. Um, but like I said, I think it'll be good for me cause it'll help me from putting stuff on that cabinet. And you could say, Dan, why don't you just stand it up on the cabinet? It's touching it anyway. And I could, but at least the hook's at the top, so I have uh, less fear of it falling down for whatever reason. So I'd say this was a successful uh, redecorating part three of the garage. If you didn't see part one of the traffic light, well, you should have clicked on the link at the beginning. Um, if you didn't see the license plates that I hung up in the garage recently, you go check out uh, that episode. I'll put a link at the end of this video which is now. So thanks for watching. Stay positive and keep on wrenching. Catch you on the next one.